58, so uh, well, I'm going to get started a little bit early, I think, because this is hard to get it through in a half an hour. Uh, this is Kubernetes on Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to be teaching. Uh, we have a Kubernetes cluster over there. Uh, we have a master node, and we have worker nodes that are running on Raspberry Pi. It's a little bit challenging to get Kubernetes running on a Raspberry Pi. If you talk to Google, they'll tell you, don't run it on less than 4 gig of memory, blah, blah, blah. You know, like The Raspberry Pi 3s are 1 gig of memory. So uh, we got it running on 1 gig of memory, but we, we did upgrade it to 2 gig of memory on a Raspberry Pi. Pi 4 for the master node, uh, but the worker nodes all run on uh, Raspberry Pi uh, 3B pluses. Uh, you can run 3B, so I'll talk about that. And I'm just killing the last minute. I'm Eric Nielsen. This is the code booth, and uh, uh, we spent our summer making uh, Kubernetes run on Raspberry Pis. So it's a lot of fun, and we'll take you through uh, Docker, uh, the the OS, the ARM image, and uh, and then we have a little sensor app that we deploy out on the table there. So uh, I probably won't spend much time on the sensor app because we only have half an hour. But I'll talk about you know how to install, set up, get it ready, and uh, go. So let's see. I got to put my reading glasses on so I can check out all the stuff. And 30 more seconds, and we'll be ready to go. So uh, if you want to, uh, at the end, everybody gets a free sensor. So uh, and you can. I have a couple sessions this afternoon that talk about how to wire up your Raspberry Pi with sensors uh, and the app that will kind of breeze through uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, I'm going to go in deep dive on the application that that we actually run uh, later in the other sessions. I think I do three Raspberry Pi sensors later today. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do. OK, we are uh, spot on, 104. So welcome to the Kubernetes on Raspberry Pi session. This is a 30-minute session. I'm going to go really fast because I normally do this an hour uh, to an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going to skip through some things. Uh, and uh, here we go. So what we're going to cover today, uh, installing on Kubernetes on Raspberry Pi. There are some things you have to do to get Kubernetes to run on a Raspberry Pi. Then write some cool sensor application. We're going to just skip through this really quickly. But obviously, running Kubernetes on Raspberry Pi means you have to have an application to deploy to your worker nodes. So that is kind of what I would normally cover. And I'll cover a tiny bit of it. Then you have to make your application a Docker image with an ARM OS. So we'll talk about that. And I'll show you what we did there. Then you have to create a, do a pod definition to run your applications on the worker nodes. Right? So we'll, showcase, we'll show you that code. Uh, then you can actually go run those. Uh, we have a Kubernetes cluster there with uh, worker nodes running. And I'll show you the commands. You can see uh, the status of your applications running on your Raspberry Pis. So that's what I'm going to do in 30 minutes or less. So here we go. This is a code booth. VMware Code is a 20,000 person community now. We're up to 20,000. Uh, we have Slack channels. You can come on. We're there. I'm there. Everybody's there answering questions. Uh, we do a lot of Kubernetes. Uh, VMware has products on AWS from Kubernetes to Wavefront to Cloud Health to Heptio. Um, all of these things are things that we do with our community. And we're here just having fun with people. Uh, and we bring IT practitioners and developers together. So just some terms. DevOps tools, uh, you guys ever use Chef, Puppet, Jenkins, Ansible, or even make files? It's all about automation and deployment, right? So Kubernetes does this. So DevOps tools use a markup language. Every good DevOps tool use a markup language with syntax, right, with key value pairs. And uh, Kubernetes is no different. They use YAML. YAML is yet another markup language. And there you're configuring your deployment parameters right in this YAML file. So that's DevOps tools. Kubernetes, container orchestrator. Uh, most people know what that is. Container is a Linux scheduling algorithm. These things run on a Linux, and they go into the scheduler that then runs things in isolation on that machine. Uh, for, for Raspberry Pis, you're basically just running one container at a time, so you're not, you know, have, so it's not a big deal. But nice to know what that is. Docker is a delivery mechanism of your image. So how many people know what a Docker file, what's the format of the Docker file? Zip? No. Text? No. Tar file. So your Docker file that comes from docker.com is a tar file that comes down and gets installed and then runs in a container. So there. And then Git and GitHub are places that you can do source management, put your application up. Right? So these are just terms good to know. Uh, we'll skip through. VMware has these things. At half an hour, I'm going to skip that. 
and we're going to get into Kubernetes on Raspberry Pi. So uh, we have a master node. Uh, we can run this on a Raspberry Pi 3 or a 4. We're running a 4 there, but we've managed to make it a, a 3. A 3 only has 1 gig of memory. Um, then we have worker nodes, which are 3s running there, and uh, that's how we're going to configure this. So we have to install the operating system, set static IP addresses, DNS routes. Um, we, have to, we have the hardware. You have to load an SD card with Raspbian. We use generic Raspbian. And you don't need some special OS to make this happen. Uh, and then uh, you need a second Pi for a worker node. So to have a home R K Kubernetes implementation lab, you need to spend about 120 bucks, right? Two Raspberry Pis and a... Um, and a small network. Uh, we'll install Docker, disable swap, uh, set up a repo uh, for our image, and then install Kubernetes. So that's what we're going to talk about next. Dell sponsors, if you want to run Kubernetes, we have a gateway uh, 5000 product that has ARM and x86 on one system that bolts against the wall. So if you're interested in that, that's, a, that's our sponsor slide. OK. So let's get into what it takes to get Kubernetes running. So first off, uh, we have to set up our network to be static. So this is just a script that would run on Raspberry Pi that sets up the master node and the worker nodes with static IP addresses. You can't have a Kubernetes communicating in a secure network with dynamic addresses that would fall apart. So all your worker nodes have to be static IP addresses. So this little script that does it, this sets it up in dhccpcd.conf. So every time you reboot, your addresses are static. You need static IP addresses. So we run this script. I call the script hostname and ip.sh. And I run it, and I pass in my host name. I pass in my IP address for the host name. And I pass in the default route. Right? I have a little hub there that's sitting on the table. And they're all running on 192, 16, and 101. I do have to have that connected to the internet. So I put my Mac under the table there, and I, uh, I connect it through Wi-Fi, because we're going to pull down the, the Docker image from Docker. So you do have to pull that down. So it does, your little machine has to get online. You can make a local repository, and then you don't have to use Docker Hub, and then you could do it all local. You wouldn't even have to have an internet connection. But it's worthwhile having that. So that's what I've done. I've set up my master node plus three worker nodes, Sleepy, Doc, and Grumpy. Right, and uh, and that's that's what we got. So, and if you run that script, you have to run it on every one. You have to run it on your master, run it on Sleepy, run it on Doc, and run it on Grumpy. Okay, now you have static IP addresses. Now you have to actually go install some stuff. Right, you have to uh, install Docker because Docker has to be on the master node, has to be on the worker nodes. So uh, we just go get Docker, and then we install it. We also have to disable swap. On a Raspberry Pi 3, it only has one gig of memory. One gig of memory, the OS takes like 500 meg. Kubernetes wants uh, 400 meg. So if you try to run them both together, they'll run, but the OS goes, oh, wait, that's, we're too close. And it'll start swapping, and then everything falls apart. Uh, Kubernetes will not even launch on a low memory system if it detects swap, right? So you have to turn off swap in order to just get Kubernetes to launch, uh, which is nice of them. At least they give you that error. A lot of times they don't tell you what's going on, and nothing works. Um, but they actually tell you if you have swap disabled. So we disable swap, uh, and that's the, that's the code to make sure your swap is disabled upon reboot. OK, that's good. Then we want to actually go get the Kubernetes. We're just running generic Kubernetes right off, right off of Google. So it's not any special build. It's just their current build. And we install that on, on the machine. Uh, and then we do some updates. Uh, then I just go and install Kubernetes. So I'm just pulling down Kubernetes from Google and installing it on my master node. So this is, but actually this is a script called install.hsh. And I'm going to run this script on the master node. I'm also going to run this script on the worker nodes. You'll see that on the next slide. But this script will go get Docker, disable swap, and install Kubernetes directly from the net. And it's all clean, works every time, no problem, on Raspbian OS right off the shelf. So what I do, I got this script, I saved it, and then I just run it, sh, install.sh. And it'll get through it. It'll install. And uh, I won't have any error messages out of that thing. And it'll, it'll be all good. Uh, now that I've installed it, I can go run kubeadm and then initialize Kubernetes. Now, this is the interesting one. This is where you might have problems if you're on a Raspberry Pi 3. If you're on a Raspberry Pi 3 and this is your master node, so this runs on the master node. The, the SD card that you buy for your Raspberry Pi is your storage. 
If you're going to buy an SD card on a Raspberry Pi 3 to run Kubernetes, buy the little SD card that's a uh, the ultra fast one, right? The $6 one is slow because it's cheap. The $8 one says ultra fast from scan, scan, scan disk. It's well worth it. You will never get Kubernetes to run on a Raspberry 3 without a fast SD card. So get your fast SD card, uh, and then you can make Kubernetes run on your Raspberry Pi 3. It took us about two months to figure that out. It times out, it times out, it times out. Uh, you, we, there were uh, blog articles where you could go in during the initialization. The initialization takes about eight minutes. So you start it, and it's just grinding away on this little Raspberry Pi, right? And then if, it's, if it doesn't make it, it won't end. It'll just time out, right? So that means it didn't make it. If you're at 20 minutes and still doing it, it means that you had too slow. You got your desktop open, shut down your desktop. Don't have a browser up on your Raspberry Pi, because it's going to use all the CPU and all the memory to get through this KBADM init. Once you get through the KubeADM init, it's, uh, it's going to run every time. It actually configures itself, and it launches on reboot no matter what you do. It's always going to be enabled. Um, if you have a Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 gig of memory or 4 gig of mem, you don't have to worry about it. It's going to initialize every time. This is only if you're trying to get it in a 1 gig footprint. You have to worry about your speed of your SD card. But get it a fast SD card anyway. So good, I've installed it here. I run kubeadm init. At the end, once it's initialized, after about six, seven minutes, it will give you a yay, it'll say initialize, and it'll give you a join command with the security key that you need to run on the worker nodes. The security key times out after 24 hours. So if you set up your master node on Friday, and then you come back on Sunday and you try to join your nodes, they're not going to join. It's going to say key timed out. There's a kubeadm command. I forget the command that will get you a new key. So just go run the kubeadm, get new key, and it'll give you a new key to go initialize your worker nodes. So this is almost it for the master node. There's one more step for the master node. You need a, a, a network infrastructure to do secure communication from your master node to your worker node. Uh, VMware has NSX, which is a complicated network environment. Uh, we don't run it on ARM. But you can, we use Weave. So Weave is a, is a network interface that allows you to have a secure network from your master to your nodes. And you can just run kube control apply minus F and pull it right off the net, and it'll install. And now you have a secure network on your, your Raspberry Pi. Pi uh, network, master node talking securely to your worker nodes. So good, that gets through. You have to go run that install script on your worker nodes. That installs uh, Docker, installs Kubernetes. Um, you get that to go. Um, and then you have to run the join command. So this is just one command, right? Which once you get through the install, you run the kubeadm join, and then that token from the slide before, when you've done the master node init, it'll give you that token. It'll give you the whole command. You just copy that command, and you run, run it over on your worker node. That join command will then join. Interesting thing about Kubernetes, and I haven't figured this out, so if anybody figures this out, let me know. Uh, when I run my join on my worker nodes, half the time the node joins in like six minutes, and you're done, right? Other times, a node will sit in not ready status for up to like three hours. Not sure why. Um, firewall, make sure everything, uh, don't have a local firewall on your local hub uh, on so that it, we don't know. But within 24 hours, when you come back, all your nodes will be in ready state, usually. Um, if not, you can uh, kill, kill your worker node and try again. But most of them will do go no problem, especially if you have master node that's a four. Uh, it tends to work. And you have ready nodes. Now these guys are ready. So congratulations. We have done the work to install Kubernetes on a master node plus a couple worker nodes. And that's all you have to do. And it's pretty reliable, other than the timing to wait for the join and your status to come up ready. So don't panic when it says, it'll say initializing, and then it'll say not ready, and then it'll flip to ready. And it's doing some magic configuration. But half of them come up right away, and they're up and good to go. OK, so that was the installation process. Now that we have that, we published these slides on code.vmware.com. You can Google Raspberry Pi uh, VMware, and you'll get this deck. right? Uh, so you can go look at this deck. Uh, next thing we're going to do is write some cool sensor application. Since I only have half an hour, we're not going to spend any time on the cool sensor application. Well, we're going to talk a little bit. We do have these sensors on the back tables, a touch sensor, a humidity, uh, 
movement, a little display that prints out the data from the sensors, and a BMP280 pressure temperature. Um, we built little apps, little Python apps that read the sensor data and put it on the display. That is our application. I'm going to focus on the BMP280 app. It's a little app that will print out the pressure, temperature, and humidity on the little display here. That's our application. And I'm going to take you through how to bundle that application up into a Docker image, then deploy that Docker image, and then use Kubernetes on my Raspberry Pi to run that. Um, these are sensors, so they have pins connected. So I'll run those as privileged apps so that they can actually access the pins. You'll see that. So this is the app. This is the BMP280. I have a session later today that talks about these applications, how to write them, how to wire your, wire your Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to do this in this half an hour. Uh, there's the code for part of that. There's code for the BMP280. So this BMP280 code. Uh, will be the code, where did I go? I went the wrong way. There, this code is the code that will be in our my BMP280 app. This is called uh, bmp280.python, P-Y. And this is our app. Uh, it, notice it loads uh, Adafruit Circuit Python BMP280 library. So when you're talking about building your Docker image, you have to have your OS. You have to have your drivers. This is the driver you would need for this, right? And then you have to have your application. This is the application. So when I'm building my Docker image, I have to build the, select the OS. I need Python because it's a Python app. I need this Adafruit Python library, and I actually need the application itself. So that's the work I'm going to need to, to build my Docker file, Docker file to deploy on a Raspberry Pi. So let's talk about building my Docker image. Docker image, you build, a, you make a file called a Docker file. I put this in the Docker file that will define what my OS, my drivers, uh, and my language and my application are. So I'll just go through line at a time what we did here. So I create this Docker file. This Docker file will work. Uh, I'm saying from. And this is my OS image. You can get those OS, OS images off of DockerHub.com. They have all these OS images already there. Um, I think it's Docker.com has them. And then, uh, so I'm going to say I want an ARM32 v7 with Python because I want Python language installed. This, if I do this, I'm going to get a 70 meg image, maybe a 100 meg image, right? If I don't specify, if I just say ARM32, I could get a 2 gig. Raspbian OS, right? So you want to go through and select the smallest OS footprint you can have because you're downloading this OS every time you deploy a workload, well, at least for the first time. So uh, in Kubernetes, uh, you know, you want to make this as small as possible. So I make that uh, ARM32 Python stretched, and then I add my application, right? So I need to be able to add that application into that bundle. Uh, so I do that. Um, I also want to uh, run install setup tools because I'm going to do some updates and I want the setup tools here. Uh, I get updates for my operating system. Um, I'm going to run Python and install uh, the Adafruit library and the, the setup stuff. So, uh, no, I'm going to run a wheel and I'm going to run in the library. So, this isn't setting up. Oh, my display library. So I said the BMP280 library, but I also have to install the little OLED display library I have there because I'm displaying the data from the BMP280 on that display library. So I have that. I also install the BMP280 library. I install image libraries for Python because I'm writing to the little display. I need the image libraries. So this is basically installing the three libraries I need for my application on top of my, my micro OS with, uh, with Python. And then I added my application in there. Uh, so OK, I've done that. And then at the end, once it's going to boot, it's going to do these, run these, install these, and then it's going to run my application. And that's what's going to happen every time uh, Kubernetes goes to pull down my Docker image and put it out on a worker node. Now, there is a way to tell Kubernetes to not pull down, only pull down once when it's, when, it's, when it's not there. And then if it's there, don't pull it down every time, which we do that. That's important. That'll be in the YAML file. You'll see that. But OK, that's my Docker file. I want to create my Docker image, so I just run Docker, and I give it my Docker file, and it'll create my image. Once I got my uh, image, I need to upload it to a repository. We use Docker Hub. Uh, we have a VMware code account out there. And we tag it, a version number. Uh, and I, I upload that. So I Docker push my Docker file to the repository. Uh, and then I can uh, you know, go 
look at it, uh, go to the go and see if it's there. And the more more importantly, you can actually test your Docker image uh, by say by running Docker run. Um, I use privilege because we're accessing the pins. If you weren't accessing the pins, you wouldn't have to put privilege there. You could just go run a Docker image right off your repository. And that's always good to test uh, to make sure that your Docker image got loaded up into Docker Hub and that you can pull it down and run it and your OS and you're not missing anything. So this is a chance to debug. So if you're missing a driver or a library, the best way to debug your Docker file is by just running it local on your Raspberry Pi. Before you try to run it in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, right? Because getting something that runs ahead of time before you try to push it out in Kubernetes is important. All right, so that's what you need to do to set up your, your Docker file and your Docker image. Now you actually want to build a Kubernetes pod. Kubernetes pod is a term used for your application, right? You're going to define your application criteria as well as what machines you actually want this application to run on. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to just show you how we did this. And this is the file. It's a YAML file. The YAML, you could probably take a, a semester class on, yeah, on a Kubernetes YAML parameters, right? It's fairly complicated. Um, but this is a very simple one. It's key value pairs. Just so you know, tabs make a difference. Spacing make a difference. Columns make a difference. I guys, guys that sit down and try to type in YAML files from scratch, and they never run because you have a space the wrong place, you have a tab the wrong place. So it is very column specific, so just understand that. OK, so this is a basic BMP sensor YAML file. This will run my, my application. I, I, it's a pod. Uh, I give it a name, BMP-display. I make. Uh, then for the specs here, I have a node name. I target a node. I'm targeting Sleepy. And that's just so in the lab environment, if you run this YAML file, instead of Kubernetes assigning it to any node in a pod, which could be your neighbor, uh, it'll target the machine that you're sitting on, which in this case would be Sleepy. So it will target. You can target. So that's most people don't target in a, in a work group. They let it run on whatever nodes they have provisioned. But in this case, we're targeting it to a node. Um, the name has to match. BMP display, BMP display, uh, and then I give it the image that's on Docker Hub. In this case, VMware code BMP280 colon V1, which is my tag. So it's going to go get that. And then I say image pull policy if not present. So basically, that's saying if we haven't done this, it's going to go to Docker Hub, pull it down, and uh, put it on, on the worker node. Uh, so in this case, sometimes uh, we erase them. So it takes like six minutes to get the worker node to run this app because it's downloading 150, 200 Meg, depending on how fast the uh, how fast the network is in these conferences, but it does it. And then if it's if it has already been run once, then it doesn't go pull that whole image back down again. I have to add security context where I give it sysadmin rights, uh, privilege true, allow privilege escalation true. That allows your application to get at the pins to be able to talk directly to the hardware and the sensor because everything is firewalled uh, on a Ras Raspbian OS. So once I have that, I can then deploy that to my master node. This has to be run. This YAML file has to be run on your master node. So you get, put it on your master node. Then you just do kube control create minus F and then the YAML file. And that's it. If, if you do that, you'll actually see there's a, you, you can run a, a kube control get pods command and it'll show you the list of all the pod applications that are running on your nodes. And you can actually see that it's initializing it, downloading it, and then it starts running it. And if it's running, it'll start running on the targeted node and you've had success. And mostly we can do that. We have that Kubernetes running on the lab tables back there and they work. Once you've got it running or you want to see your status, you can do code kube control get pods, which will show you all the applications on a master node. You can describe pod, do a cube control describe pods and give it the name of your pod and it'll give you stats about everything that's happening with your pod. And then finally, cube control logs BMP dash display will give you uh, more data about your application. And that's basically running through what you need to do to put Raspberry, get your Raspberry Pi with Kubernetes up, running, create your Docker file, put your app there, and then go off and create your YAML file to go load your application. This is just a zoomed up version of the YAML file. And we have several different uh, OS Docker images out there, BMP280, infrared, digital touch, and DHT11 sensor that's out there. I copy it onto the master file and then run it. And we have machines there you can use. 
other things that you can go look at. Here's just a, some interesting stuff on uh, Python coding, uh, detecting I2C sensors, and so forth. And I think that is about it. Other interesting stuff, you can go to code.vmware.com and search for this uh, slide deck. Uh, we have some labs out there. Um, Top 50 sensors, uh, that's where the, uh, some of the do uh, Docker files are as well. You can go there. If you want home sensors, everybody that listens to this gets a sensor ticket. So I'll hand out sensor tickets, and you can get a free sensor. If you want to go buy a kit, they're like $30 on Amazon. You can go buy your own sensor kit and uh, do that. And I think I'm running uh, sensor programming to on Raspberry Pi today in uh, another half an hour after the next guy talks. So if you want to hang out for that, um, I'll be around. And I think I got done in uh, 23 minutes, which is good. So we have seven minutes for any questions anybody might have. Hello. Yeah. Any questions? I got one. Master running on the Pi also? Yes. Or all so uh, we, we run the master on a Raspberry Pi 3B plus and we run the worker nodes. We recommend a four because you can get two gig of memory yeah. versus uh, right. one gig of memory. It's tricky to get it to run on a course, Raspberry right. Pi it's 3. Amazing. But yeah, we have them we have them running master and nodes. On the same Pi. No, not on the same separate, Pi. So separate, if you yeah, want to yeah. have a home load, you have to get two Pis. Yeah. Two 3B pluses, 35 bucks a piece. If you want to cool. splurge for the $50 Raspberry Pi 4 with two gig of memory, you're going to have a better time of it. Well, now i got to tell my team that our masters are way oversized. Yeah, that's right. Right, right exactly. Yeah.